y'all tuning into the stream. We got plenty to look forward to. Mm -hmm. The next is going to be a little rerun of some talent we saw earlier in the day. It's going to be Goblin going up against some talent that we had not seen in Black Twins, but it's going to have to be after, after the break. Short break. <laughs> Hello again and welcome back everybody. We're going to be continuing the bracket in top 64 here at Shine 2019. And I was just told an uh, interesting nugget of information from you a second ago. What's that? Something about Goblin? Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. It was Goblin. But more interesting, or equally interesting, not to play favorites here. He's playing up against Black Twins, who we have not seen a whole lot of on the stream. But how is it that Goblin is playing against Black Twins right now? Oh, well, I mean, if one is to believe, Twitter.com slash GoblinManRoy, it should beat Tweak 3-2. Yet another early game upset. Uh, I did, you know, we want to get some more confirmation on that, but that is a very interesting to think, it, uh, you know, thing to see, I think. <laughs> and uh, if that's what happened, that's yet another top contender who is already down in losers between Light, Tweak, I believe, My well, actually, Juice is the one that sent Myron to losers right, from Cracker earlier, so that losers bracket is not looking good for pretty much anyone right now. Definitely not. Let's see what we got so far here. I love watching the Roy. Honestly, he's someone who's kind of falling out of favor a little bit, but still really great to see. And the Pichu, talk about falling out of favor. Exactly. <laughs> and it's right on key with that. Like, you talk about people who have fallen off of the list of very commonly played characters. Pichu is, the, the representation is pretty much gone because of all the nerfs. Right. Well, the representation went from uh, one to zero. And maybe Goblin is here to show us why. Dash tech. Taking the, uh, or I'm sorry, the like dash forward tilt. Yeah, it. dash cancel forward tilt, yeah, bringing yeah. him right back to zero on that fresh stock. Black Twins being a man of many faces, so good with so many characters. Pichu being one of his primary okay. usages. I like the mashup of the LB because there was no follow up that happened after that, and he got himself stage positioning. Right, all right. Nice use of the neutral B to keep Goblin off the ledge, but uh, oh, forward tilt also. Knocking him off the ledge, and no big follow-up, unfortunate. Yeah, surprisingly, not going to hit uh, uh, Goblin on his way back up from that recovery there, even though he was kind of in a relatively easy spot to hit. Right. All right, got the up throw here, see what the play is. Catching the air jump at the back here, and first stock. I like, I like it. Keeping himself grounded, just being able to see how he reacted, and because that Goblin acted so defensively so fast, he's able to close it out. Right. All right, a little combo starter here for Goblin, but... Black Twins getting a combo of his own. Forward air, knocking him off stage. Yeah, we saw this against somebody way earlier in the day where he was playing against a Bayonetta. Goblin would constantly go for the jab or just the rising side Bs to try and catch people. The short frame of Pichu might not work often, but if he catches him with one of those double edge dances at the ledge right now, oh, Pichu going go go oh, by. Oh, yeah, yeah. Probably won't even see him. He'll just teleport to the blast zone. Like, Pichu already has survivability issues as is, but right. the kill power of Roy, you just have to respect it every time trying to go for another dash cancel, but instead just gets the falling up here to close it out. Very interesting. Probably caught him. Holding the wrong direction there. Going to take the stock a little earlier than you would expect. And it's going to be 80% on Goblin's second stock. The Black Twins on his last. And on the back foot here. Exactly. Now, Goblin uh, has been doing a good job of getting out of these ledge traps that Black Twins has been trying to set up. Right. But you see that it looks like Black Twins is starting to hold his ground a little bit more. They're not dropping shield early. Yep. Just waiting to see where he goes so he can make it seem like he's leaving an opening there. All right. And the offstage neutral bees have been good, but just not sealing the deal like Black Twins needs them to be doing. Oh, all right, up throw. I'll go for forward throw, I like yeah, it. Yeah, go for stage positioning instead. Nice. Get these thunder jolts, and there nice. it is, gonna close it out, set him up perfectly on where he knocked him away. All right, and all of a sudden, way more even than it has looked so far in this first game. Can't be throwing out moves like that, man. You gotta watch out. Exactly, especially as this last stock progresses. Pichu damaging himself is just so beneficial for a goblin, even though it's small bits of damage. Yep. Roy kills so early, and you see that Black Twins is just playing super patient, not trying to commit on anything, because he knows the problems that'll come if he does. All right, but big opportunity here. Misses the tech chase off the back air. Speaking of back airs, Goblin sneaking one in himself, and what do we got? Forward air, Nair. Yeah, con just consistently putting that down tilt pressure on yep. shield, and also catching the agility as he came through, too. There's wow. no hitbox on that. Right. Oh, no. Oh, oh boy. No. Yeah, this could lead okay. to something big, but the air dodge is going to get by. I like the fact that got, uh, Black Twins didn't try to fight him right at the ledge. Like, no, I'm just going back to center stage. I'm going to reset this whole problem. Exactly. Stuff. All right, still kind of close, though. Goblin looking for some sort of shield poke. Going to take the blazer off the top. Shield poke, indeed. He was just trying to whittle it down as much as possible, whether Black Twins tried to jump out of there or just hold on to it. He knew that he was going to call something out. The only proper option was to go to the right. He did not, and that's going to be game number one. 
All right, but definitely a lot of lessons learned in that first game. We're going to go to Town and City for the counter pick. It's probably a good lesson. It's maybe not Pokemon Stadium. And also maybe some soul searching on the character select screen, but not for long. Going right back to the Pichu and the Roy. And they're getting right into it. Yeah, just being confident in the Pichu pick. Uh, obviously, Gob Goblin, we won't really see a pick out of him that's no, different no, no. than the Roy. He, it's been what's been allowing him to not only get on the PGR, but just to constantly perform well at every major he attends. All right, we'll see here. So far, 31%. I mean, those hard hits from Roy are way harder than they feel like they should mm -hmm. be. Exactly. And the fact that Pichu has to has to be up close. Like yes, most characters yeah, yeah. can try and space against Roy, but you have to be right there up close and personal with that sweet spot. And Goblin will gladly take advantage of that. Oh for sure. Alright, got a nice little throw opportunity here for you're gonna knock him off stage. Oh. Get up attack getting caught out. Yeah, and he he got hit by the get up attack. The last interaction of the last game, and he's making some adjustments. I am liking these changes to Black Swans, but unfortunately didn't close out that down yeah. there. Definitely just a few pixels away. All right, nice. Trump back here. Rare but effective. I love that option being just like that trump card option. Yeah. Just waiting and not utilizing it early. It's not used nearly as much as the last game. Good bait on that counter, but not too much off of it. No, not huge. Definitely had the idea there, but the combo wasn't coming in, and now got with an opening. Oh, yikes. Dangerous spot to be in. There it is. Exactly why. Like, where do you go? Where right. Do you, like, there's Forward no air is killing you. Up air is killing you. Rock in a hard place. Yeah, right. and you can stay there as long as you want to. You know Goblin will eventually just get that one trade he's looking for. Oh, my goodness. All right, big oh, damage. No. Okay. Oh, that, that oh. would have easily been a stock if he connected both hits at there. But yep. Black Twins can very happily get himself back to center stage. Thankfully. Keeping it even, playing some neutral here, but Black Twins sneaking in the grab and knocking Goblin off stage. Oh, oh my Ooh, god. There we go, and Black Twins starting to really turn it up a bit. Like, a lot of his conversions have been much better. Right. He's calling out more jumps, and that's so huge, especially in a character who remains so grounded. If you can force him to stay grounded even longer. Oh, all right, gets the tech, though. Gonna survive. Thunder Jolt, tech chase opportunity here. Nice, up throw. Thunder. There you go, there leading is. the DI. You gotta figure out which way they're gonna go, and Black Twins knew he was gonna DI out. That's gonna be the stock. All right, so two stocks. Black Twins looking a lot better this game than the first mm -hmm. one. See a little combo here, forward air, up air. Not gonna hit, though. Yeah, at the end of the day, no matter what, even with the changes to Pichu, you have to respect that small frame and yeah. how quick Pichu can close the gap or how quick <laughs> Pichu can become a flying type and lose that stock. Exactly, 111 after the hit. That's respectable on Town City. So we got maybe one combo here. Maybe another, gonna knock him off stage. Yeah, oh, okay, goes for it. Yeah, big differences though, like it's kind of similar to playing against heavies when you're Roy, except the light character. All he needs is a few interactions and you're at kill percent. Yeah. You see, I, I like the fact that Black Twins is going for zoning, no more though. Jab lock into forward smash, he's gonna close it out. All right, Black Twins, looking good. I love those setups too. You see him kind mm -hmm. of from Squirtle as well, or you can just sort of force that missed tech and just go to check them, right? Mm -hmm. If they do get the tech and they roll away, the jab's not going to connect, but it's a jab. Yeah. you got plenty of downtime. You get, I mean, it doesn't have a lot of cooldown. You can do whatever you want. Exactly. Usually, you're not going to get punished by yeah. a get-up attack, or if right. they happen to roll away, it's like, all right, cool. I'm still in a prime position to chase you down. But if you hit it and you jab lock them. That's like a genius. Exactly. And you get a win, even it back up at one game apiece going to Battlefield. Shout out to Pichu. You're so excited. That's a good fight. music selections, by the way. That too. Oh, all right. Making it back. Like the angles there. All right, nice parry. Black is just getting better and better on the defense as the game goes on. As exactly. The, match goes on. the one thing, one, the, the one issue that Roy can run into is that he's pretty much committed to just one hit outside of side B. So right. when he lands with these fairs, if he happened to overextend a little bit, Black Twins gets a lot off of it. Exactly. And keeping it very, very even right now. Black Twins kind of stuck on the ledge. Ford are going to start some sort of offense. Yeah, finally finding that one gap in the pressure that he needed, but All right. going right back to the stage. Where's he going? Just to the ledge, looking to try and punish one of the options here from Goblin, but it's not happening. Goblin's too fast. Exactly. Goblin just kind of staying on his toes, just like yep. staying as far away as he can. Oh, he's oh. going to read the roll in, covering as much as possible, and that's going to close that sock out. Pretty fantastic, honestly. Just good coverage and nice reaction. Mm -hmm. Doing the, the down smash, take the stock. 
looking real clean right now. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's still very risque too because you see like that down smash go off. If you're if you're a goblin and you neutral get up there, one smash probably would have gotten rid of that stock. Bro, I think you just mean risky. Risque is very different. Hey man. All right. <laughs> hey man, look. Suck at the ledge. Goblin looking for the down tilt. Gonna take a little weak hit near and going for the eruption. <laughs> hey, you see that goblin's just trying to put out like a lot of hitboxes at the ledge yeah. that are auto canceling, so he can just get one mistake. But the mistake is gonna be of his own, taking a 49%. All right, let's see what happens here. Lightroom's playing just way better. I am thoroughly impressed. Nice. <laughs> and gonna dodge that neutral B. Throw here is not gonna kill. Gonna just take that forward throw. Yeah, the Alto's being so much weaker on the Fire Emblem characters yeah. in this game. Oh, this could hit. Oh, oh my word, agility somehow Almost. getting by. That looked like it should have hit, too. Okay, grab not gonna connect. And the forward tilt will take the stock. All things considered, only 65%. Uh, 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 never <laughs> yeah, mind. Um, uh, where, where'd that go? <laughs> The big thing, like we talked about before, even though there's only a few interactions that Goblin needs to win, Black Twins has been winning so much more, not only between the ledge trapping like so, but with the damage output on his bread and butters. Mm -hmm. All right, back here, gonna knock him off to the right side this time. The Thunder Jolts have been so good. That, oh, okay, I was gonna say down smash from forward tilt. Neither are gonna hit, though. Yeah, just barely skimming by that Ooh. forward tilt attempt. That would have closed the stock out, if not closed it out, put him at a very negative position. Yep, okay, big jab from Goblin. Putting the pressure on. Oh, there it is. Down tilt gonna connect. Double oh, edge dance. Gets if he him. hit him with that, I think Pichu just might have straight up died. <laughs> yep. I would not be surprised. All right, one stock. Salt Goblin has left in this game, but we'll see if he can hold on to it. Yeah, I'll Swing be out of shield. Very, uh, you know, very confident option to go for there. Double pairing. Yeah. It seems like Goblin's starting to turn up a bit. He sees how low the shield is, and he's been able to chase down Black Twins a little bit more as this match has progressed. Definitely, definitely. All right, Black Twins trying to catch the landing. Gonna th Thunder Jolt, I love it, man. Mm -hmm. Pichu reminds me of just those traditional fighters, right? Throw the fireball out, follow right behind it. Yeah, one hazmat reminding everybody that yeah. Pichu is basically a Kuma. Right, right. With being a glass oh, cannon, and with heavy damage output, that forward smash is oh, just barely not gonna kill. That was so good, too, just like walking Goblin to the right side of the stage mm -hmm. as much as he could with the jab lock. Next one might be it. All right, nice near. Goblin yeah. on the offensive, nice. Oh. Exactly the offensive choice that he needed right there. Covering everything with that a neutral B. And what's the way he's going to get back on? Go Goblin actually making the right call. He's been caught a lot at the ledge lately. All right, but the double jump is uh, pretty risky. I think you can't get away with that too often. So the bag of tricks is getting depleted as mm -hmm. the set goes on. Up throw, no thunder. Just Trying to look for the up air, Take the back air here. Yeah, getting stage positioning one, once again. Uh, Dungeon Jolt's not going to do anything, but oh! good defense from the parry, calling out the rising aggressive play from Goblin. And Black Twins looking much better. Pretty much after that game one, just kind of putting that in his back pocket. Wow, dude, the confidence to just sit there, parry, down smash. Still looking so stoic. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit of conditioning, too, because he hasn't really seen Goblin go for an aggressive option off the ledge right. oh, I, that often. Usually it was just full hop jumping, or he was another get jump. Up. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that was the first time, and he was so ready for it. That's when you feel like bad. Like when you play against your boy all the time who constantly bops you, and then you make that one time, that one time after five attempts, yo, I'm finally going to roll. And he's already there punishing it. Like, bro, get out of my house. I was going to say, yeah, like, <laughs> I'm done playing. <laughs> I'm taking my console home. <laughs> All right, well, we're going back to Battlefield for this game four. Is it going to be the last game of the set or not? It's up to Goblin. Possibly. I mean, like, it, Goblin has been one to make great comebacks. We've seen that the excellent set out of him and Ryuga. Uh -huh. well, I, I believe Ryuga ended up winning. But it's not a very smart option to count Goblin out. The explosive right. play from Roy, you just never know when you might end up getting caught at that ledge. Exactly. Got to play conservatively. And so far, Blackman's making it work. Nice. And shield poke back here is not going to connect, though. Goblin rolling out. Back to neutral. Okay. That's the melee. You never see that, man. Just old fashioned Pichu near. That was some Street Fighter stuff. Just wake yeah. up DP, trying right. to go for the up B. But he's going to get thrown back off stage yet again. I like the fact that Black Twins doesn't really like, put himself in a bad position. You see a lot of times where people go for uh, an edge guard to put themselves at disadvantage. Instead, just commits to the Thunder Jolts so he can guarantee if he hits him, he can go for the edge guard. I like it. Down here, gonna reset the neutral, and the up air is almost gonna take the stock for Goblin, but oh my god, he's been going for those, and honestly, one of them hit, and it does have some low cooldown, but maybe I need to calm down a little bit. Forward tilt gonna take the stock for that, Black Twins. Yeah, good positioning too, just putting himself out of range to make it look like he couldn't punish him, from, yeah. but the dash cancel up tilt, gonna close it out. And we were talking about, ooh, there you go, good punish option right there, baiting out the get up attack, gonna even it right back up. Pichu's face. 
looked a little bit like Black Twin's face when exactly. he, <laughs> that laser hit. <laughs> the, the, the grinning of the teeth. Yeah, the, oh the, no. That oh no look. All right, 34%. The Pichu combo is still working, though. So good to see that. Thunder Jolt's always still very important in the matchup. Exactly. You just you want that consistency to yep. stay. Oh. Goes for the cross up and baits out the upbeat himself. Now he's gonna go for the high That's... recovery. He's forced to use his jump here, oh. and he's gonna make it by. So very dangerous, but still makes it back. Goblin's routes have been good, honestly. Maybe once really in have. the whole set has he actually gotten hit off stage and paid the price for it. Exactly. Like even the times where he's been hit by Thunder Jolt, there's been a few times where he's been able to just get through past that yep. upbeat with just the right timing. Uh oh. Unfortunately, the LP was a little bit too preemptive that time. Going to lose the stock. Coast to coast, going to take it. Black Twins looking to take it in this game four. Uh-oh, down tilt's big combo starter. Oh, my goodness, and the Battlefield platform's coming in, but the miss input's going to stop the combo. Yeah, it's still racking up a decent quick to 41%. Uh, yeah. So, and it's also another thing where Goblin's like, all right, now I'm on my last stock. I'm down to my final game. I have to play perfectly, and I'm just getting comboed to hell. Yeah. Oh, wow. Double edge dance taking an 85 after the hit. Hey, man, it, whether it's a, a seven-piece or a four-piece, as long as you close that stock out, that's all that matters. Yeah, exactly, man. All right, looking for the jab lock. No such luck. Nice tech in from Goblin. Back to center stage. Back here. And knock him off. So where is he going? Full, double jump, full hop, like we pointed out again earlier. Uh, Black Tones doesn't really punish it too much. I think he's just trying to avoid getting uh -oh. swapped out. The up B again, trying to call out an aggressive approach. All right, just the one jab. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Goblin on the top platform, looking to come down, but at his own on his own time. All right, nice combo. Back oh, back here. Oh. There it is. Goes for That's the light jump once again. It's a good option to hold on to, not using it too much. He got it with it early in the set. Didn't really use it for a while, and sealed the deal. Canada popping off for the boy in the background. You said it, man. No pun intended, but the trump card that is the ledge trump back here. Only when it matters most, the Black Twins pull it out. First to take that game one, and then to take the set. You love to see it, man. Yeah, a lot of times when uh, players on the come up in particular are trying to figure out, like, why is it that I can't get people killed consistently? Like, right. why is can't? Uh, why do I not uh, improve and I plateau? Most of the time, it's because the options are always the same. When you have something like that in your back pocket, like the ledge trump, where you decide to hold off until the end after you were regularly ledge trapping him and right. he was making a buy, it's like, all right, now where it matters most, you think I'm not going to go edge guard you? And he caught him. Exactly. And then we saw a couple times, too, Goblin was enjoying the invincibility as the thunder jolts came, so that might have been something that led mm -hmm. to the conditioning of him holding onto the ledge. He's like, all right, he's going to thunder jolt a couple times to let him have it, and mm -hmm. then once my invincibility wears off, I'll get back onto the stage. But this time, Black Twin said, there is no time to wait. Yep. I'm coming, and I got a back air with your name exactly. on Exactly. <laughs> and the last thing you want to do is have a Roy with momentum right. start to get going, because we've already seen how early he's able to kill. And on Pichu, who is extremely light, Black Tunes want nothing to do with that. Moving forward in winner's side. And uh, up next, we'll be having another high quality match for you. We, yes. I've already seen this gentleman to start the block. Speaking of momentum. We have Leon and the Buzz. We got the run back from Defending North that you all saw was it was bad. It was bad. Leon made that matchup look rather free, and DeBuzz is definitely not trying to hold that L yet again. Definitely not. And DeBuzz, also a player not known to lose the same thing twice. You know, no. obviously he went home from Defendant North. He opened up the ThinkPad, and mm -hmm. he's like, I'm going to figure this out. Got some practice in, and hopefully we'll see how that will reflect in this next set coming up. If there's a new category I'd like to be added at the Smashies, it would be Mr. Consistency. Mr. Or just or just having the consistent ability at an event. Like, who does it the, uh, right, the best right. the most? The Buzz is a very high contender for that category. Like you said, once something like that happens, he goes straight to the lab. Right. Figures things out, doesn't waste any time, and tries to figure out what can I do to slow down the gameplay or amp it up a little bit to prevent that from ever happening to me again. Right. And like I said, man, I'm excited to see it. Always love. I remember back in the day, the Buzz and Mars played back to back to back to back to back. Yeah. In Smash Four, and it was not good for Mars no, for a little not bit. At all. And then it was not good for the Buzz. Yeah. And then it was not good for Mars. They kind of took turns back and forth in that same fashion, because both of them were so interested in evolving that meta game between mm -hmm. themselves, adapting, and. Improvising. Another good one to point out there too, uh, with yeah. Light in the Buzz in the oh, last sure, game. Sure. Light realized, oh, if I use Fox Illusion, I can break up Luma. Right. And then eventually, 
the Buzz realized, oh, if I just wait and punish this illusion consistently. Yeah. So it went from the Buzz constantly winning to Light constantly winning to Buzz to, uh, to the Buzz constantly winning. And if you don't take the time to actually sit there and like study your matches or study a lot of things that you need to learn, maybe see what the top players are saying or doing, that's how you end up staying exactly where you are. I don't, you know, it's it's just the, the key factor is the why people are so good for so long in a bracket.